أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر اللهم اجعلنا من الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر أمين رب العالمين ثم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله we reached the study of the 103rd surah سورة العصر and I want to begin by saying that even though this is the shortest surah up till now that we're studying, and the shorter one is coming later on, Surah Al-Kawthar, I find giving dars on this surah the most difficult. And it's probably the case that it will take me more than one session to uh, at least cover with you this, the notes that I've taken and the, the things that I want to share with you. And I pray that Allah Azza wa gives me clarity of speech, that I may be able to communicate its lessons to you uh, ta'ala, uh, with some degree of clarity and um, without avoiding too much confusion. The first thing I want to share with you about this surah is that in today's session, probably and most likely we're going to talk about an overview and kind of look at the surah as a whole instead of going into word by word by word analysis. Perhaps that will be our next session, inshallah ta'ala. But first and foremost, a bit about the coherence and the placement of this surah in the Qur'an. This is the 103rd surah, so the surah before it that we studied last week, Surah Al-Takathur, it comes right after it, and there are lots of parallels. For example, uh, uh, Shaykh Fadl Salih has Simon Ra'i, he says, هذه السورة وقعت بين خسرين. This surah is situated between two great losses. The previous surah said, أَلْهَاكُمُ التَّكَاثُرُ حَتَّى زُرْتُمُ الْمَقَابِرُ You were deluded by your want of having more and more and more, which was a loss. And the next surah is going to be وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةٍ لُمَزَةٍ And there you find كَلَّا لَيُنْبَذَنَّ فِي الْحُطَمَةِ The person is being thrown into the hellfire. نَارُ اللَّهِ الْمُوْقَدَةِ So there's loss before and there's loss after. And then in the middle is the surah that says إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرٍ This is the surah of loss. It's situated between those two. The other thing to note about this surah is that in the last uh, surah we found that... Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal, the last thing He told us was, ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ On that day you are definitely, certainly going to be asked in regards to the favor and the blessings that you enjoyed. And this surah begins with the greatest blessing that we enjoy. So Allah says you'll be asked about all the blessings, but what's the biggest blessing? It's time itself. The fact that we have time, everyone has time. The rich person, the poor person, the healthy, the sick, the, the old, the young, everyone has time. So, and this is the number one thing we'll be asked about how we spent our time, subhanAllah. So Allah says you'll be interrogated about the great blessings, and the very next surah begins with the blessing that we appreciate the least, which is al-asr itself, it's time. Then the previous surah talked about the great distraction, at-takathur. We talked about takathur being something that, distra- you know, al-hakum at-takathur, it distracted you. We uh, were too busy wanting more, competing and getting more, showing off what we have to others. This is what we're busy with. But the surah, previous surah didn't tell us, what are you distracted from? You know, it's one thing to be distracted, then you have to say, what are you distracted from? For example, you could say, video games are distracting you from studying for the exam. So yes, the video games are the distraction, but what are they distracting you from? From the exam, from studying, right? But the previous surah didn't mention an. Now we talked about this last week. Usually Allah says, لا تلهكم أموالكم ولا أولادكم عن ذكر الله. Don't let your money and kids distract you. But He doesn't stop there. He says, distract you from the remembrance of Allah. There's a from. But there was no from in the previous surah. What are we being distracted from? That's the, that's the question that's left open. And in this surah we find, what is it that most human beings are distracted from and they don't do? إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ When we go into the detail and the, the lessons of this last ayah of Surah Al-Asr, we'll find this is what most human beings are not concerned with. They're con- we're preoccupied with other things. They're distracted from this task. And this is the only task that can save them from loss. Subhanallah. 
Then in an interesting contrast, and this is part of the style of the Qur'an. The Qur'an, uh, a lot of times, it presents ideas contrasting terms with each other. The central term in the previous surah, the central term, was takathur. And the central term of this surah is actually khusr, loss. I'm roughly translating khusr as loss. While takathur means to get more and more and more. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah. At takathur means to gain and want more and more and more. Khusr literally means to lose your most essential assets. You know, it's one thing you invest your money in a business and you were hoping to make 20%, but you only made 10%. That's a loss, but you still made something. You didn't lose your initial investment. But when you put money in a business and you lose the money you put in and don't make anything on top of that either. You lose your capital investment basically. Ra'sul mal, what's called in Arabic. Ra'sul mal. You lose that too. Then that is called khusr. In other words, the previous surah was talking about people trying to get more and more and more, and then Allah says, no, the reality is you are in loss. No matter how much you think you've gained, the reality is that you are situated in a, in a position of loss, subhanAllah. We find that this surah is a concluding address of a, the previous four surahs. This began in surah Zilzal, إِذَا زُلْزِلَةِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا then we studied the surah after that, وَالْعَادِيَاتِ ضَبْحَا Then we went after that, you know, and, and الْقَارِعَةِ Then again after that, التَّكَاثُ And in all of them, there was the plight of the human being. Here's the reality of the last day, which was in Surah Al-Zilzal and Surah Al-Qari'ah. That's the reality of the last day. And here you are, who's not concerned at all. And that, that lack of concern was Surah Al-Adiyat and again Surah Al-Takathur. The final conclusion of all of that is the human being, in the end, because he's distracted, what's his state, is, state of affairs? He is in loss. He is immersed in a state of loss. So it's almost a conclusion to that entire discussion that's being presented in this surah. We find this surah is also very similar in, one, in many respects actually to Surah Al-Teen. Surah Al-Teen we covered a few sessions ago. And in that surah Allah Azza wa says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ فَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ غَيْرُ مَمْنُونَ Famous surah, right? إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Here what does he say? Something similar. He says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ But says it a little differently. This time he says, وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّالِحَاتِ it's a little bit different. Here also there is mention of the human being, al-insan. Inna al-insana lafay khusr. In that surah, Allah also mentioned the human being. He said, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِينَ So there's mention of human beings in both. There's mention of those who believed and did righteous deeds in both of them. But there, you could compare them together as far as their theme and their structure. As far as negative, you could look at it overview as negative reinforcement compared to positive reinforcement. In other words, Surah Al-Asr is very, uh, it's, it's the overwhelming theme of it is warning. Okay, it's negative reinforcement. But Surah Al-Teen, Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned it even and ended it even in a positive note. There's no mention of loss, rather, فَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ غَيْرٌ مَمْنُونَ فَمَا يُكَذِّبُكَ بَعْدُ بِالدِّينَ لَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِيَحْكَمِ الْحَاكِمِينَ It's actually positive, and even in the beginning, the human beings created in the best possible form. So there's a lot of positive lessons in Surah Al-Teen, but there's a lot of warning in Surah Al-Asr. But when you combine the two lessons together, you learn some very remarkable things. There Allah said the human being is created in the best possible form. Here He said, roughly translated, every human being is in a state of loss. If he's in the, created in the best possible form, then why would he be in a state of loss, right? You know, if you're created to, to meet success, then it's a tragedy that you're, you, you, you're even qualified to be successful, and yet still you ended up being a loser. You still ended up losing. So Allah Azza wa Jal did not tell us that the human being is in loss first. He told us the human being is qualified to be successful first. And it's his own failure that leads him to become of those who have lost in al insana lafi khusr. This comes later on. But that declaration is earlier. I want to share with you in regards to this surah the uh, very, very profound, very beautiful things that get overlooked. In this surah, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions four things at the end. You all know this. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ Four things. But three of those, or two, the last two things that are tawasi over and over, wa tawasaw bil haq, wa tawasaw bil sabr, they're both actions. Roughly translated, they are communicated as enjoin the, to enjoin the truth, to enjoin perseverance. That's how an average translation addresses the subject matter of wa tawasaw bil haq, wa tawasaw bil sabr. But they're actions. What's the ayah, what's the part of the ayah before that? Wa amilu as-salihat. 
They do good things. They act right. They 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 act out righteous deeds. Isn't that also actions? So Allah Azza wa Jalla mentions iman, which is a thing inside of you. It's not outside. It's on the inside. Then He mentions amal wa amil salihat. But He usually only says those two things. He doesn't go further. But here, what does He He say? Wa amil salihat, and then adds two different specific kinds of actions. Wa tawasul bil haq. What about It could have been wa aqam salah wa It could have been any other action too. But he highlighted two actions. The lesson from that is these are the actions that people will overlook. And as we continue our study of the surah, we will find why is it critical to mention these actions. Other actions, you will understand. Wa amilu salihat. By the way, when you tell someone they, he does good things, he's a good Muslim. He does good things. What things come to your mind? He prays. He goes to Hajj. He fasts in Ramadan. He stays away from haram things. This is what comes to your mind. These are the first things that pop in the mind. This is a good person. He does good things. What things don't come to your mind? Tawasi bil haq and. Tawasib is sabr. It's critical that these things be mentioned because they cannot be overlooked. And why can't they be overlooked? The necessity of not overlooking them, especially in this surah. Inshallah ta'ala, when the time comes, we'll discuss it in more detail. Then there's the issue of uh, uh, just the word wa between all of the conditions that Allah put. If human beings are in loss, we're again roughly over, we're glazing the translation right now. And the next session, inshallah, word by word analysis. But in this last exception, human beings are in loss except two. And I'm again roughly translating those who believed, acted righteously, or did righteous, good, did good righteous works, and then enjoined each other to truth and enjoined each other to perseverance. But it, in between those four things, there's an and. Except those who did this and, they did this and, they did this and, they did this. You know what uh, wa does as opposed to aw? Right? Wa, what it is is, it's something you have to meet if, if the exception is, the only exception to these people are people who do A and B and C and D. Which means how many of those things do they have to do? All of them. If you put an or in between them, what happens? You could do some, you could do some others, right? But if you put and in between them, then the only people who will meet the exception are people who fulfill all the conditions. Not some of them. They can't afford to only have some of the conditions met. They need all those conditions. So this declaration in this surah is very powerful, and the exception is only one exception, but anyone who wants to be the exception will have to meet four conditions. Usually in the Qur'an, Allah mentions two conditions. Which two conditions? الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Those two mentions two conditions. But in this surah, He mentions how many? He mentions four conditions. This is the most comprehensive place, most elaborate place, talking about the exception to those who are in a state of loss. And we'll see inshaAllah ta'ala as we proceed, why that is. I want to share with you a famous quote uh, in regards to the surah. I think it sums up what I'm trying to communicate. This is by Fakhruddin al-Razi. He said things in his tafsir that sometimes are considered controversial, rahimahullah, but we still don't take away from the fact that he's one of the greatest grammarians we ever had in our history, and one of the greatest mufassirun in our history. Some of his commentary has solved many, many problems. So we, we leave the bad and we take the good. If there's something that's controversial and it's not acceptable, or it's, you know, uh, it's a, even if you want to go as far as calling it a mistake, the issue is, who are we to judge a person based on their mistakes? All of us are full of mistakes. Anybody after Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is open to criticism. So there's never going to be such a thing as a perfect scholar or a scholar that's not going to be questioned. There's not a single scholar in Islamic history that's not subject to criticism, right? So it's no shock that somebody comes up and criticizes a scholar and says, oh, "Why do you why do you read his work? He said this, this, and this. Yes, he did say this, this, and this, and I have the right to disagree, but he said a lot of good things too." And it's, you know, in the end, the criterion of good and bad is the truth, is the evidence. When somebody says things based on evidence, we take it. When somebody says things that are not based on evidence, we don't take it. The bottom line isn't the person, it's the truth itself. So we don't reject people based on a mistake that they make. I mean, think about that. If you, have you said something wrong before in your life? And somebody says, don't listen to that guy. You know that one time he said something that I didn't like, or uh, that was wrong. I said it was wrong, but that doesn't discredit the person's work. You know, a good example of that even, even though I'm not a fan of translations, is uh, the Yusuf Ali translation. Uh, Yusuf Ali rahimahullah was one of the first translators of the Qur'an in English. Impeccable English translation. He had a very unique take on riba. He had a, you know, he didn't think that interest as it is today is riba, as it described in the Qur'an and Sunnah. He had a weird take on it or whatever. Most scholars didn't accept his take. That doesn't take away from the fact that the guy spent 20 years traveling the ummah, looking at historical sites and writing an extensive translation. May Allah reward him for it. He made a mistake, he made a mistake. You call it a mistake, but you don't pass judgment on 
the person. Anyhow, the beautiful quote from Fakhruddin al-Razi in his Tafsir Kabir, this is what I wanted to share with you. هَذِهِ الْآيَةَ فِيهَا وَعِيدٌ شَدِيدٌ The first thing. In this ayah there is an intense, a severe warning, a threat, uh, 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 and a warning that's filled with a promise. لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى حَكَمَ بِالْخَسَارَةِ Because in this ayah Allah Azza wa Jal declared loss, utter loss, عَلَى جَمِيعِ النَّاسِ against all humanity. Allah has mandated loss for all humanity altogether. Jami'in nas. Illa man kana atiyan bi hadihi al-umur al-arba'a. Except for the one who comes to Allah, who approaches with these four exceptions. That's what he's saying. But then he goes further and he says, وَدَلَّ ذَلِكَ أَنَّ النَّجَاةَ مُعَلَّقَةٌ بِمَجْمُوعَةِ هَذِهِ الْأُمُورِ And the language illustrates that salvation, being saved on the day of judgment, hangs in the balance of these four things. You meet these four conditions and you're saved, and you don't, you're in trouble. And the, because of the language, it's illustra- that, that it's illustrated that, subhanAllah. And this is why I felt it urgent to even make the announcement after Jumu'ah to invite you know, as many of you as possible to come and listen to the message of this surah, because in many ways this is the summary of the entire Qur'an, and in many ways this surah is a summary of all of the deen. It's a summary of the entire message of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which is why ulama give this surah a lot, of, a lot of importance. It's three ayat. It's very short. Every kid memorizes it because it's easy. It's very easy. But the amount of scholarship that has been done on it is daunting. It is absolutely daunting how much work has been done on it. Now, in this series, in this series of, uh, of discourse, what I want to share with you is in the previous surahs, Allah has made comments about the human being. For example, he said a few sessions ago we studied, Ya ayyuhal insan, ma gharraka bi rabbika al kareem. Human being, what, what deluded you? What kept you away from your gracious master? What was so, what was such a big distra- distraction that deceived you? In other words, that you, remember, al hakum al takathur? Allah is actually directly complaining to the human being in that surah saying, what deluded you? What was it that took you away from the grace, your gracious master? Then Allah said, Ya ayyuhal insan, innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadhan famulaqi. You, you forgetful human being, you are chugging away towards your Lord. Like it or not, you are headed towards your Lord, effort after effort after effort, and you're eventually going to meet Him. There's no avoiding it. You can be distracted all you want, you're still headed in that direction. Then He told the human being, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ We created the human being in enormous toil, meaning the life of the human being is full of labor. Whether you want to live like a believer, or live like a kafir, doesn't matter, you're still gonna have to work. You're still going to have problems. You're still going to deal with stuff in life. So your, your life is created in struggle. Why not make it a struggle that will benefit you here and the next life? Instead of just struggling, so it benefits you here and has no benefit for you in the next life. And why should you have concern for the next life? Allah Azza wa Jal said, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ He went further a few surahs later. We created the human being in the best possible form. He was designed to, to achieve high things. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to achieve those high things because what do we find in this surah? In al insana, lafi khus. Despite that high noble status he was given, he was not. Most human beings were not able to live up to that that high that that nobility. Allah Azza wa Jal makes a lot of comments about the human being with the kind of declaration that is found in the phrase in al insana. This is not the only place in the Quran where we find the words in al insana. This commentary about the human being occurs many times. What does Indal Insana mean? The human being is no doubt something, something. Allah is going to say something, make some commentary about the human being. We found several variations in the Quran of Indal Insana lakafurun mubin. No doubt the human being is openly and clearly extremely ungrateful and extremely in extreme denial in regards to his master. We found Indal Insana khuliqa halu'a idha masahu sharru jazu'a wa idha masahu khayru manu'a illa al The human being is created weak, pathetic. Frivol, you know, frail. Some things happen to him, he gets overwhelmed, overjoyed. Some things bad happens to him, he loses all hope. Allah says, "Kalla inna al-insana la yatqa." No doubt, it is the human being that it, that truly rebels. It is the human being that rebels, and the language suggests, don't blame it on anyone else. Don't say society made me rebel, shaitan made me rebel. Nobody else, human being himself, he rebels. Then he says, "Inna al-insana li rabbihi la kanud." Know that the human being in regards to his master especially is very disloyal. All these commentaries about the human being, he's ungrateful, he's created weak, he rebels, he's, uh, he's uh, disloyal to his master. This is all commentary. But what's the conclusion? The conclusion is here. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ It's not an adjective of the human being. It's not a description of his behavior. It's now the consequence. 
What is the net result of all of these you know, misbehaviors? The net result is he is immersed in a state of loss. Important considerations before we get into the surah itself. One more is the general principle versus the exception. When, whenever you use the word illa, except, except, you are talking about what we call in English an exception. What is in majority? What is more in number? The rule or the exception? The rule is in more number and the exception is very few. You say, everybody came except that one. When you use except, you're talking about one or two or a few that didn't come, everybody else is here. Now in this surah, what is the rule? What is the majority situation? Asr إِلَّا الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي Plus, that's the rule. Human beings are immersed in loss, in doom. What's the exception? إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوا بِالصَّبْرِ by, by presenting the exception as those who believe and do good deeds, etc. that we're going to study, by presenting them in the form of an exception, what we're learning here is this is not going to be a lot of people. This is going to be few. The vast majority of human beings will be in loss. That's the, that's the rule. And the exceptions will be a few. May Allah Azza wa make us from the exceptions. So now, we talked about Surah at teen having more of a style of, of uh, tabshir, and this one having more of a style of indar, meaning good news versus uh, warning. The other thing that I, that's very important to highlight is Surah at mentioned ajr. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ فَلَهُمْ أَجْرِ فَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ غَيْرُ مَمْنُوا Right? This surah doesn't mention any ajr. Ajr means reward. There Allah said, a reward that will never be discontinued, a reward that will never be forbidden from them. He uses those words. But in this surah, there's no mention of reward. The only mention is human beings are lost, except these people. But he doesn't say, and these people will get jannah, and these people will get everlasting life, all of it, nothing. No, no mention of what they will get. The only thing that's mentioned is, these people are failures, and these people escaped. These people escape. You know what this is? We call this in, in simple English, we call this passing grades. Somebody gets an 85, somebody gets a 95, somebody gets a 100, somebody gets an A, a B, or a C. But you know the guy who barely survived and didn't get the F? You know there's the F, right? Let's say, I don't know, in New York it's 65. Is that the failing grade here in Texas? I don't know. But 65 is your passing grade basically. You get a 64, you failed. You get a 64, you fail. Now whether you get a 34, a 30, a 0, a 25, all of them get what grade? F. That's all an F. The only thing that will survive is 65 or above. You understand? Like passing grade or above. This surah is not talking about higher levels of success. Other surahs talk about success. They deal with what jannat, what gardens, what treasures. That's the subject matter of other surahs. This surah, the subject of it is, who is not a failure. Now I put it in that, in those terms because I want you to understand. This surah describes the bare minimum, the bottom line. Who is above the failing grade? Because anybody who didn't meet this minimum requirement is obviously what? A failure. They're a failure. So this surah is not about earning jannah, this surah is more about escaping hellfire. This surah is not about success, it's more about survival. Which leads me to this very, very critical discussion that we need to have today. What is the difference between talking about success and talking about survival? My contention is this surah is not talking about success. What's it talking about? Survival. What's the difference between the two? You see, survival is something when you, when your survival is being questioned, you forget everything else. When you're drowning, when you're in a building with fire in it, right? when there's a danger headed your way, when your survival is in question, you forget everything. And when your survival is in question, there is no time for you to talk about your what? Success. There's no, there's no need to talk about success. I mean, if you're working in an office, and you wanna, you're talking to your boss about getting a promotion, what are you talking about? Success. But the building went on fire, and you say, let me finish talking about my promotion first. I haven't just finished negotiating with you. Does that make any sense? No. Because you can't talk about success unless you've already secured your own survival. You understand? So before we talk about higher levels of paradise and higher success, what do we have to ensure we're okay with? At least we're surviving, we're not in the failing grade. That's the urgency of this surah. The bare, bare, bare minimum. The survival. The survival. And you know, it doesn't make any sense for someone to talk about or be concerned with anything else other than survival, if they are not meeting the conditions of that survival. Imagine you have to get out of...